Cell part like going around and around in my head, but I had no idea where the beautiful people was going. <laughs> um, hello again. Um, I've got the decks here. I actually, hang on, I need to, um, I need to check the name of someone's channel. So, Zeta Offi Yukai. Is the most amazing reader. I'll put a link to a video that I just watched that she did. She used the raw PDF of the Musical Alchemy Astrology deck and she got right inside the cards in the way that they were always intended because they frighten a lot of people because there's a lot of really deep treasures under the surface. So I'll put a link and watch it. It's a really fun reading. She's an amazing reader. So thank you, Zita, off the UK. So let's go into this deck. I'm going to give them a, a riffle or a rifle. You see, that's come into my mind today. A rifle is one, our riffle is two. Because um, I always say I'm going to rifle the deck, but it might be riffle. <laughs> So, uh, hang on, I need to put this back on my little piano. So glad I didn't play another advert of a small child learning a Christmas carol. <laughs> so, shh. Poi poi. What can we share with the beautiful people today? What can we share with the beautiful, beautiful people? Nothing. Have a lovely day. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. giving anything yet. I like it when it does that because so often they just spew out. There we go. Cancer. Ancestral dwellings. And this is first musical instruments. So this is really about Ancestral coding, family patterns, dissolving to reabsorb. So it's an A, which is the third eye. Mm. So let's just all focus on the A for a moment. Just give you the I am polarities. I am individual, I am ancestral. So it's about breaking, breaking, breaking free, breaking free. It's about breaking free from these ancestral patterns. Look, in the alchemical magnum opus, which is also part of this deck, particularly it's, it's noted on the first 12 zodiac signs, Cancer represents solution, as in like when you put salt in water, that and stir it, or sugar in water and stir it, it's a solution. And it's about emotional osmosis. What's already there in your solution 
of your emotions that is an ancestral family pattern and what is there in there that's your true individuality so you have this idea of <laughs> moody dangerous loser <laughs> i've been one of those um easily emotionally bruised and the wounded soul seeking endless sympathy easy to do so i am individual is a galactic empath but what's interesting about the difference between an earth empath and a galactic empath is the galactic empath can sense everyone else's emotions but they don't become part of their story. I've got my phone on ping and I can't look at it for the moment. So you don't absorb the other people's energies. You just witness it. You understand it. You get them, but they don't get inside your emotions and make you react and trigger you to be those other sides of the energy. And so this is the heart of deep love guardian warrior of home peace and it's also the instrument of ancient love and family comforts this is a very soothing frequency so let's get a couple more cards on there i'm trying to keep these quite short because sometimes we don't have time for a 50 minute waffle <laughs> So what else can we share? You and me, poi poi. What else can we share with people? Oh, two came out. Three came out. Oh, not that many cards. <laughs> and look, she's back. Oh my goodness. Eris. The chaos. And there is a lot of this chaotic emotional energy swirling around at the moment. But what comes next? Eros, the ultimate panacea. So I just want to... Eris is raw, feminine, destruction with love. And we've got love here. We've got Eros. Eros was the fourth primordial deity that was created. And then during the evolution, Eros became eventually the son of Aphrodite, which wasn't the original case. And then by the time Eros became Cupid, we'd infantilized the truth of love. We'd lessened the truth of it. So this is the fullness of absolute love as we strip down ourselves and then absorb and seek the nutrients of the trueness of that ultimate panacea of love in the chaos outside of us and we have moon in pisces that's so interesting all three of these cards have been completely redesigned in the deck i'll show you them So if we just look at the, the main things, it's a moral compass challenge, the ultimate panacea and passive daydreaming. What's interesting as well about the symbols between Eros and the Pisces symbol is there's something very concurrent about the mergings of those energies together. But passive daydreaming is not actioning it can be quite an uncomfortable energy to remain in. It's like you're waiting for the spiritual bus to come along and pick you up. And I would say suddenly all three come along in a row, but they don't. You have to walk your spiritual journey, ultimately, for the ultimate panacea, for the ultimate love. So I am ordered or I am chaotic with Eris. And then... I am love or I am lost. And I love the energy between those because it makes you question, especially with what is the value of lust? It can be a really important energy. 
And then Moon in Pisces, I am sharp or I am blunted. That's about being sharp enough to understand that your passive daydreaming is the creation of your future now. But if you're blunted to it, it's almost like you're asleep at the wheel and you shouldn't even be in the car. You need to get out of the car and walk because you have to make this journey in natural steps, in natural timing. So we've got 10 minutes. I've got enough time to get some of the cards out as well. And then let's see how we, uh, see what else comes out with it. So I riffled them. <laughs> See, that's interesting in that the Tawadness, card 32, came out and landed right on Eris. All of your future is in the chaos of the now if you can but unpick the nutrients available. Let's keep shuffling, see what else we get. I feel like I'd like another three. You see, that's interesting. This one fell on Eros, Earth Grab. Almost like looking into the world around you and seeing no truth in the love, no divinity out there. Almost being in a barren wasteland. You're not. But that's the, what we're almost observing as all this chaos is rolling around us. Lean into it. There's love inside that chaos. Because Eris destroys through love to reconstruct. It's a kind of ego leveling energy. And yeah, I am using the word ego, but I have a slight problem with that. But we'll go through to that another time. Because I think Freud has made that complicated. So Interesting, the moon has landed on Cancer. The moon rules Cancer. So, can, uh, the Mona is a male moon in Norse mythology. Um, but what it's really showing, because it's 39, it's showing you that it's 12 frequency. It's the 12 zodiac houses, and as the moon moves around those 12 zodiac houses, it ruptures into our existence and pokes us and creates ancestral coded emotions. And what we're trying to do is to change that so that we go into 13 moon frequency, almost like a moon in Ophiuchus frequency, a complete calm and a stillness to wash over us. So let's get one for Moon in Pisces. And that's interesting, Moon in Pisces is the 12th house. The release of the cacophony of, <clears throat> of unstable emotions. That's your solution and the solution. <laughs> it's the solution in the mix and it's the solution to the solution. So, Ooh, that one's a little wrist one. <sighs> so what's the solution? Love, love. <laughs> it's the diploma. So look, you've got the two cards here that are just pure, heavenly, panacea, the answer to everything. This card doesn't look like that now anymore. <laughs> Remember that. So, um, it's, it's love. I don't know what else to say. I feel like for the last few years, the answer to everything <laughs> is love. But that has to begin with self-love. That has to begin with the calming of our emotions. That has to do with reaching into that 13 moons frequency of Flursa. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, look, it was 1444 four, four, as I leaned in with my squinty vision <laughs> to check on how long this video is. 
I feel like I want to get a couple of ceramics. I love the noise. It's so... Oh, it's so soothing as it goes up my arm. Ula, owl, reaching out your senses. <clears throat> Wenthorn, unbinding from the emotions of the moon. And then, un, bliss, joy, stability, at one, at peace, happy, blessed. Two. It's a sweet little message. <laughs> Love. So I will see you again very shortly. Wassail.